Honestly, I didn't know what to expect when watching this movie, but it wasn't this. For Jojo is a German drama that tells the story of Paula, a woman who lives with her childhood best friend Jojo. The two do pretty much everything together, which leaves Paula feeling upset whenever the two have to part ways. On one occasion when Jojo leaves for a trip, she happens to cross paths with a former fling named Daniel. Things take a big turn when Jojo returns from her trip and announces that she's going to marry Daniel. Seeing this as a big mistake, Paula does everything she can to stop the marriage from happening and tries to bring things back to normal with her friend. I thought that 365 Days This Day would be the uncontested winner for worst Netflix film of the year, but after seeing this, I'm not so sure anymore. I was in a constant state of utter disbelief over how bad this movie was to start and how much worse it kept getting. It was an absolute disaster that I couldn't pull my eyes away from. I don't even know how the filmmakers could have possibly looked at this movie when it was all said and done and think that everything turned out okay. Everything about it is executed terribly, to a point where it ends up being more of a comedy of errors instead of the drama it's supposed to be. There's no better way to start this review than by talking about the main character Paula. She is far and away the worst protagonist I've seen in a movie this year. There are so many things wrong with her character, I could make the entire video just about her alone. Paula is obsessed with her friend Jojo to the point of being a psychopath. She literally can't do a single thing by herself without her being involved in some way, which is extremely weird at best and straight up creepy at worst, and this attitude never changes throughout the entire movie. Whenever Jojo removes herself from Paula for even a moment, Paula turns into a complete child. She cries when on video calls with her, throws temper tantrums, and collapses on the floor like a rag doll. There's even one moment where she's asked to leave Jojo's apartment, and Paula keeps staring at Jojo the entire time as she's leaving, all the way up till the door closes. I mean, yikes. When she isn't busy being a deranged lunatic, Paula rarely does anything else. She's an unsympathetic deadbeat sloth who never pays rent or works a job, and her only distinguishing personality trait is the number of guys she slept with. Pretty much every single flaw one can think of for a character is rolled into Paula. As you can imagine, all of this makes it impossible to sympathize with her. She's a spoiled brat that never takes any responsibility for her real problems or comes to accept the growing gap between her and Jojo in any healthy way. If there's any character that defined the word toxic, Paula is it. Her friend Jojo isn't much better though. Unlike Paula, who is a walking, talking train wreck, Jojo is a living, breathing statue that reacts to events with about the same amount of enthusiasm. I couldn't understand what Paula could stand to gain in being friends with a woman that boring. By herself, there's nothing distinct about her as a character that I can talk about at length. Her entire worth as a character is placed almost entirely on the fact that she's getting married to a guy within days of connecting with him. And that's pretty much it. Sudden marriages aren't unheard of, and there could have been some meaningful dialogue behind her reasoning, but the movie makes no attempt to explain such reasoning. It all amounts to vague emotions like, oh, he makes me feel good, and other such garbage. She even admits herself that she doesn't know why she feels the way she feels about the guy, which is just... Ugh. As if her character arc wasn't lazy enough, things get even worse when the movie explores her relationship with Paula. Simply put, their dynamic is toxic. Nothing between these two ever comes close to resembling a healthy, mutually beneficial friendship, in fact being the complete opposite. A big part of that is because these two are very immature when they are together. Even by themselves they have a hard time acting their age, but when they're paired up, they're even more ridiculous. Whether they disrespect public property or others around them, all of their actions serve to prevent me from caring about any of their problems. The conflict that exists between them as a result of Jojo's spontaneous marriage might be the most obviously manufactured I've seen in a movie in recent years, because it's so binary in how it's presented. Paula and Jojo are polar opposites to all of their issues and have zero nuance between either of them. There's so many conversations where the two basically just say, I'm right and you're wrong without any deeper thinking involved, so the drama ends up going nowhere. Other times, massive tonal shifts will occur often in the same scene, and I had no idea if the characters were supposed to be mad at each other or not. One moment the women will be losing their minds at each other, and in the next they'll be laughing and joking as if nothing happened. The movie was constantly battling itself over what kind of story it was trying to portray. Because of this, I couldn't stand either character, though Paula is definitely the worst on account of her complete lack of respect for personal boundaries. This was one of the things that pissed me off the most about this movie, because it's not natural in how it plays out. Paula insists on going on a trip with Jojo and her fiancé Daniel to their old neighborhood, and for some reason Jojo is just okay with it. I didn't understand why Paula got to insert herself and dictate the terms of everything they did, and somehow Jojo and Daniel just shrug and go, yeah, this is fine. 
That was something I noticed a lot about the drama in this movie, by the way, is how many muted reactions there were to everything. Something bad will happen on screen, like Paula breaking into her brother's apartment, or the pair causing trouble at a store, and the actors react like they took a Xanax cocktail before filming. No one behaves like a real human being, and it was so damn boring to sit through. The only time the movie isn't boring is when it's just plain weird. Paula frequently makes odd facial expressions that clash with the tone the scene is trying to convey. One scene even involves Paula wearing a horse mask and her and Jojo professing their love for each other as friends, and they slowly kiss while she wears the mask. When I saw that scene, I was just like, wow. I have no idea if the movie was trying to be funny or have a message behind it, but it was so stupid in the way it was presented, I couldn't bring myself to care. This is just one of a handful of instances where the movie tries to be funny or clever, but with how unpredictable everything else in the story is, the attempts at comedy fall flat. As for the story itself, it barely feels like it exists to begin with. Once Paula goes on the trip with Jojo and Daniel, the movie goes to sleep and just runs on cruise control. Characters mostly waffle about in walks and talks, or sit around talking about the most inane conversation topics committed to film. For someone in such a hurry to get married, Jojo takes a real long time to make it happen. The supporting characters do little to add any excitement. Daniel is probably the least interesting character in the whole movie. No job, no personality, no hint or clue of any kind that could suggest why he's so loved by Jojo other than that he always feels the need to give the cringiest kisses to Jojo whenever they're on screen together. God, he sucked. Most of the supporting characters have subplots that either go nowhere or fail to tie in with the big finale in a meaningful way. There's a mystery around Daniel that Laura's trying to piece together, but it's not satisfying because every time she hits a dead end, a character conveniently pops up and allows her to ask questions and keep investigating. These run-ins are so lazily implemented that they kill any sort of suspense involved with Daniel, and it doesn't help that all characters involved, as I mentioned, are uninteresting. One character in the form of Laura's brother did show potential as a positive influence in his sister's life, but the movie completely completely squanders his involvement and has nothing for him to do. Beyond the dull characters and subplots that are tacked onto them, the movie has a fatal flaw that unravels its story and pretty much renders it pointless. I won't spoil it here in case anyone wants to check this movie out for themselves, but to say I was dumbfounded after realizing it was an understatement. It basically involves a communication breakdown and characters being unable to talk to each other like mature adults. What infuriated me the most about that reveal is that despite Daniel's shadiness, despite everything that's revealed about him in the climax, he never experiences any consequences for his actions. Like, what? There is something to be said about the concept of separation anxiety and how it applies to Laura's obsession with her friend. Given the right kind of character development, it could have been intriguing to see her overcome it, but the movie constantly addresses this in the wrong way. Rather than have Laura go through something akin to growing pains and slowly adjusting to life without her friend, she has nothing else to do than be a constant thorn in Jojo's side. I would feel bad for Jojo, but between her putting up with it and her ridiculous upcoming marriage, both characters end up in the wrong. And this is what makes the movie truly revolting to me. It teaches that it's okay to just go out and get married within days to someone on the basis of feelings, and that it's okay to leech off of and harass your friend like some sort of parasite. Its ways of approaching relationships with others can give the wrong idea to improve impressionable audiences who might be influenced by them, and that is nothing short of shameful. Overall, for Jojo is a disgraceful, despicable, and disgusting waste of cinema that I'm baffled was even greenlit in the first place. But honestly, it's so terrible that it's actually kind of fascinating to watch. If you like corny dramas and you're in the mood to watch a real bad one, and I'm talking about one that almost reaches the room levels of bad, you might be curious in checking this out, but otherwise just stay clear. There may have been good intentions behind this movie and how it tries to observe how relationships affect others, but the script leaves its subtext dead on arrival. The unlikable characters, toxic messages, wildly inconsistent tone, and boring nonsensical story made this movie a complete, total, abject waste of time. What did you think about this movie? Did you hate it as much as I did, or were you able to find some redeeming factors to it? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap up my review of For Jojo. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Spanish horror film Valley of the Dead. Bye bye!